We're playing origami because we're trying to make all of our energy systems fit <laughs> in this one box above the water tank. I mostly just didn't want to have to lift this heavy thing. So we're starting with 300 amp hours of battery and we've left room in our tray to add additional batteries if we feel like we need more capacity. We don't always get it right the first time, so I'm using the oscillating multi-tool to cut the side of the shelf down so that the wiring for our inverter can get to the inverter. Our bed area is actually wider than king width right here, and then it tapers to king width. So we're gonna trim the mattress a little bit, end up at queen width by our feet, and we're gonna build cabinets on either side to add some more storage. And it's also going to house, this cabinet will house all of our electrical and control panels. We have a horrible air check and it keeps on plugging itself. Push it in, click it back. <laughs> pull back, that's it. It's not staying. <laughs> That'd be time for some new kicks. Was there a mouse in your shoe? <laughs> it's time to get back to work. It looks like these Renogy lithium iron phosphate batteries ship in a storage mode. And so one of the first steps is to activate them. It says the, the blue light will be dim. Press the thing and it should go bright. I can't, there we go. Now it's bright. That's so it. that battery is on. We have the power. One of this meter is hard to read. It spent a year with the packaging still on it. First step here is to check the voltage of each battery. 13.26. Good. 13.28. Awesome. 13.27. Cool. So we are getting the correct voltage out of each battery. So this is a hydraulic cable crimper that we bought on Amazon to make these big battery cables. And all we're doing here is putting the cable in. <laughs> so we've been working late tonight getting all our battery systems hooked up. We've got a big battery bank and an inverter and a charge controller. And it's time to start the truck and see if the truck's alternator charges our batteries like it's supposed to. The truck He's up gonna fire gonna, the truck up. You're gonna tell me if the light turns on. I guess that's another perk to having the cab pass through is that I can yell at him if something goes wrong. We're looking for a red light. No light. Is it connected? Yeah. Oh, the light's on. I want to make a less dumb duck face. Why was I making a weird duck face? My oscillating multi-tool is that tool that I never knew I needed, but once I have it, I can't live without it. Kind of like my wife. These are the control panels for our electrical system. This one here turns our 3000 watt inverter charger on or off. And this one monitors all of our power consumption and our battery levels. So this one will tell me how much power is going out, how much power is coming in, and what our current battery level is at. Swish! That wasn't as funny as you wanted it to be. The internet might think you're funnier than <coughs> you. I'm not really sure. The internet definitely thinks I'm funnier than you do. Oh. If you guys think Riley's funny, you should tell him. Does it fit? No. So. <laughs> We're gonna drill a Mickey Mouse because this triangle shape needs to fit through the hole. Why not a Minnie Mouse? One of us is already deaf in one ear, so we take our hearing pretty seriously around here. Riley runs the wires, and then I make them look pretty. 
So the Renogy smart lithium batteries that we're using need a ethernet cable attached between each one and then to the monitor screen so that we can monitor all three batteries with the same screen. And I happen to know that my dad, the network guru, has uh, all of the tools required to make up our own little short ethernet cables. So we're here at Christmas with the family and he is working on building us up some ethernet cables. Gotta get the wires all in the right order. Last step is to use a special crimper tool. And now, a tool that I have not seen before is it looks like he's got a tester to make sure that the order was done and that the crimps are all set. All right. So we got a good cable. Thanks, Dad. We're on our maiden voyage with the camper and the batteries and everything hooked up. This is to see my parents. And something that we make a point of doing is never traveling without a fire extinguisher. And we just looked at each other and realized we do not have one. So we're gonna stop at the auto parts store and get a fire extinguisher just to be safe in case there's any issues. So now that we have them, we won't need them. So our inverter is 3000 watts and that's big enough that I really felt like we needed a breaker panel for all our different circuits. I didn't like any of the panels I could find that were available, but I did really like these Blue Sea Systems uh, circuit breakers. So we made this panel that holds these circuit breakers and we're going to install it into the front of this electrical box here. So real quick, here's that circuit panel we're working on the other day. This is what we got going on. This 10 gauge cord is gonna hook up the inverter. We've got separate neutral and ground bus bars. And then the positive goes and is distributed between the three circuit breakers. So we're gonna have two for appliances and one for the water heater. In the future, we'll also add one for the air conditioner. And we've got one extra for who knows what's next. I can see myself. Yourself out. I haven't looked at myself in the mirror in two months. The plan is to cut the back of this box out. This box is going to end up mounted to the bottom of the countertop and we're going to have one outlet on this side, one outlet access from inside the gearbox, this outlet mounted on top of the countertop. Step one, whenever you're working on anything where you might get shocked even if you think the power's off, Take your ring off. So it's really important that the neutral and the grounds be separated through this entire process. A lot of people will go, well, I don't get it. The neutrals and the grounds are tied straight to each other in the electrical panel on the side of my house. They are only tied to each other where the ground actually goes to earth. So in this scenario, we wouldn't want our neutrals and our grounds tied to each other in the camper when we're plugged into shore power. So what this Renogy uh, inverter has going on is it actually has a relay inside here where it ties the neutral and the ground together when we're not connected to shore power. And when we are connected to shore power, that relay disconnects and makes sure that the neutrals and the ground stay separated so that we're actually grounded back at whatever electrical panel we're plugged into. So that's why the neutral and the ground are separate in our sub panel and the neutrals and the ground remain separate as they come into this inverter. We're getting the shore power connection hooked up. I don't know if we'll ever actually use this, but we bought an inverter charger, so might as well hook it up. I fully plan to charge your batteries at your mom's house. <laughs> I plan on going to the Tesla chargers. got the inverter charger turned on and Riley's about to plug in shore power and we will see if we are charging. All right, here we go, plugging in shore power for the first time. It uh, says input 117 volts. And it shows that we are putting power into the battery. So, yeah, we got shore power. It's working. It's working. Yeah, so now we're charging, we're charging our batteries at 73 amps now. Inverter charger. That's a lot. Uh, yeah, that's a lot. Yes, that's sir. that is the amount I expect to see. I think that the I think that this is rated for 75, so it's pretty much putting its. We are wrapping up <laughs> a few things in this electrical heater water box. Sorry, OSHA. 
And then we get to put the bench on and hopefully never take it off again. That's the hope. So we've been on the road a few weeks now and we are super happy with how our electrical system is performing. We were waiting to release this video to make sure we were happy with the components we used and that we would be satisfied with a recommendation to you. After a lot of research in the different off-grid electrical systems, we ultimately chose to use all Renogy products. I really liked that they combined multiple pieces of equipment into one to make the setup and installation super easy, to minimize wiring, and uh, it just helps, everything works together seamlessly so that we have easy monitoring of our equipment. After installing the Renogy products and being super happy with how they performed, we reached out to Renogy and we're teaming up with them to give you guys a discount code. So you're gonna be able to get 10% off your purchase using our discount code, Ambition Strikes. And part of that deal is that we also will get a little bit of compensation for promoting their products. We do want to remind you, we paid for all of these products with our own money. We would not be giving this glowing review on them um, if we didn't fully believe in the product. It's a great product and I think that you'll be super happy with them if you use them in your off-grid project. We're also going to put together a comprehensive build sheet of how our electrical system works so that you guys can use that when you're implementing your own build. I think that the, the design that we came up with is, is robust, it's powerful, it's simple, it's easy to use, and uh, I would recommend this exact setup for, for anyone considering off-grid. Um, if you have other questions about how to set up your off-grid setup, feel free to reach out to us and I can recommend uh, some products for a bigger or smaller system as well. We're going to go uh, ski because it's snowing outside. <laughs> Thanks for watching and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. There's, there's, there's someone staring at us through the window right now, and I can't. I can't. <laughs> this is our first experience. We're in a parking lot. Trying to film in a parking lot.